Hello Aviators, Sky here, and today we're having a journey into the world of business jets. We won't be talking about a specific aircraft, but rather about the industry itself, filled with both the cool descriptions as well as all kinds of prejudices. For starters, a short tour of the industry and games with numbers. Business jets are the core of business aviation, a branch of aviation that is quite vast, in addition to jet aircraft, it also includes turboprops and sometimes piston aircraft, as well as, of course, helicopters. In fact, the definition is rather wide. If there is a group of people flying to a business event, it is already business aviation, regardless of which plane they fly on. But if you look more strictly, business aviation nevertheless includes aircraft initially created for these purposes. The history of business jets as its main representatives began in the 1950s with the Lockheed Jetstar, which at first glance seemed like an expensive toy, but eventually proved that it had the right to exist, as did the type of aircraft that it represented. Over time, this type expanded and soon Cessna, Embraer, Gulfstream, Dassault, Hawker, Bombardier and other flying limousines won the hearts of businessmen, stars and politicians from around the world. In our glorious times, the sky is filled with about 22,000 business jet aircraft, and this fleet is expanding. More than 700 new planes take to the sky every year. Given that there is a lot of business jets in the world, and they are very different, there is a fairly general classifier of such aircraft, dividing them mainly by weight, capacity and range. The smallest birds belong to the light jets class. They cost on average from 5 to 10 million dollars, accommodate about 5 passengers and fly a couple of thousand kilometers. Here of course there are subclasses. For example the Honda Jet and the Eclipse 500 are very light jets, and the little Learjets and Phenoms are just light jets or super light jets. Yes, super light is not really the lightest, but the heaviest of the lighters. Pretty complex definitions. The light jets are followed by the mid-sized jets, such as the Cetacean Excel or Legacy 450, that can accommodate 9 people and fly on average 4 to 5 thousand kilometers. These are not the leaders in comfort and performance, but already serious planes. In the middle class, we can often find a kind of top models, super mid-size. They are some of the most popular models. The capacity varies around 10. They are more expensive than their classmates, but at the same time they can fly on a bit longer distances, which often satisfies most of the clients. Planes such as the Challenger 300 belong to this class. Serious guys come on the next step. Large business jets. Challenger 600, Falcon 900, Gulfstream 5. These planes have large cabins, top comfort and a bunch of cool features. The range variety of this class becomes even wider. In principle, the flagships of business jet manufacturers, such big guys as the Dassault Falcon 7X, the Bombardier Global Express and the Gulfstream G650 also belong to this class, even though their masses crawl over 30 to 40 tons and flight distances can even compete with the long-haul airliners. Strictly speaking, the classification of business jets can be limited on this. However, I will note that these descriptions are rather arbitrary. Often, marketers of aircraft manufacturers presenting products attribute them to higher classes. Is it possible to turn ordinary airliners into business jets? Of course, it all depends on the size of the wallet. Everything you want from the Embraer Lineage 1000, based on the E190, to the BBJ 737, ACJ 320 and beyond, up to the giant flagships that government delegations love so much. These are not quite business jets, but rather VIP airliners. They were initially created as commercial aircraft. Ok, we saw the big picture. Several major classes, dozens of models and hundreds of aircraft worth billions of dollars. And now the question is, what is it all for? Let's start with the obvious things. Business aviation is an industry built around the passenger and his status. If you take tickets to a regular flight, then firstly, passengers will be surprised by a fashionable company of celebrities, and secondly, this fashionable company itself may interfere with the passengers. And if a serious delegation boards the plane and cabin turns into an office, surrounded by a crowd of strangers, this will not work out very well. You can of course take the business class, but these factors will not go away. 
only a physically separate plane can remove them, but taking a 200-seat airliner to transport a dozen passengers would be too much. Another factor is, surprise, the comfort. The brightest factor is the interior of the aircraft. Leather chairs, full-size monitors, tables and interior elements made of natural wood. Beautiful. You can of course say that this is all show-off and you can work without the elements made of natural wood, but it would be strange to buy a plane for 20 million dollars and at the same time save 50,000 on the interior. Plus, the conditions at the airport are much more comfortable. In large harbors, the business aviation has its own spaces, separate halls and terminals in which all procedures are completed in minutes. Plus, the aircraft themselves have a completely individual approach to passengers. Specially trained crews, food from your favorite restaurant on board, special conditions for ordering. When there are only a few passengers and the prices are high, such features become standard. There is also an emotional factor here. You know the plane and its technical condition. You know who maintains it and how. You know the crew. In this case, a personal plane gives maximum comfort. Excessive? Irrational? Often, of course, yes, but we are all human, no matter how much money is on the accounts. After all, if we were guided exclusively by logic when buying a car, the streets would be full of Fords and Toyotas, and all these BMWs, Cadillacs and Gallant Wagons would be considered a completely irrational acquisition. After all of this, you may get the feeling that business aviation is needed only to fly separately from ordinary people with style and comfort and the business jets are just flying Rolls Royces, in which billionaires with bags of diamonds and fashion models fly to Dubai to drink champagne at 100,000 per bottle. That is the case, of course, but such a format is not the only one, and not the main one. The question immediately arises, if it is not a matter of luxury, then what is the point of such flights? Probably the most popular question, why should people fly somewhere on business in a world that has internet, phones and Skype for example? The discussion of this issue often gets absurd and brings up another question. If everything can be solved with Skype, why do people even leave the house? Practice shows that even the most technologically advanced people, like Jack Ma, Elon Musk and Tim Cook, constantly fly to summits and meetings, because no matter how effective the internet is, a personal meeting is sometimes necessary. And what about the work requiring physical presence? Frequent corporate jet passengers are, for example, the workers, who need to do something on the spot. You won't repair a generator on Skype, and you can't assemble an engine by a phone call. Here, of course, the balance of costs and benefits is important. There are special business air transportation companies, as well as corporate departments, that are looking for ways to ensure maximum efficiency, and they quite pragmatically calculate when and how it is best to transport people. And it often happens that corporate planes are the best at performing this task. For example, if you need to transfer several top managers of a large company with a million dollar salary per month, their time is incredibly expensive and it would be desirable if this time was spent at work rather than on sitting at the airport or in a hotel waiting for a flight. And this applies not only to the billionaires and presidents, but also to the special personnel. A breakdown has occurred at some remote facility and immediate repairs are needed. You can save several thousand on airline tickets and lose several million during a facility's downtime while waiting for a flight or spend more on transportation, but deliver people to the place as quickly as possible. Access to the plane, prompt service and a direct flight are doing their job. This is no longer a luxury, but a necessity. In general, the attitude towards business aviation exclusively as luxury is often harmful. Most people perceive business jets as just beautiful toys, a kind of Ferrari but with wings. But unlike the Italian supercars, these aircraft are primarily a working tool, and like any tool, they should be used. You can spend $3 million a year riding your plane around the world, or you can keep it in a hangar and still spend a million a year on keeping it in a hangar. In concept, this is similar to normal commercial operation. The more you fly, the better. Although business just fly 3 to 400 hours a year, which for a regular airliner of course is nothing. Another feature of aviation in general, and business in particular, which intuitively many people do not accept, comes from the discussion of flight hours. The concept of a plane's age is very arbitrary. 
business jets undergo all the necessary maintenance procedures, allowing them to be significantly upgraded and to fly for a very long time without compromising safety and comfort. Therefore, in the sky, you can often find planes that were assembled decades ago and still feel great above the clouds. The reason for stopping their operation is mostly not physical, but moral obsolescence. Some new technical features, the image of the owners, and most often environmental restrictions. The absence of strict age requirements makes the secondary market the most preferable. What is the point of buying a new plane if you can take almost the same, often much cheaper? And there are so many proposed options that choosing the right one is not a big problem. However, the stereotype that old planes are dangerous can be harmful to customers themselves. People not familiar with the industry may demand a completely new aircraft straight from the factory, not for some awesome innovations, but simply because they are afraid of 5 to 10 year old planes, and overpay millions because of this fear. Well, okay, they don't get old, they fly a lot and give comfort. But still, those aren't really the selling points. What else can a business jet offer? One of the most important advantages of business aviation is the flexibility of transportation. The first plus has already been mentioned – efficiency. Business aviation makes it possible to get a plane exactly when necessary, without referencing the airline schedule, and to perform a direct flight to a destination in a minimal amount of time. Let's go further. What if you need to quickly visit several places located in different cities? On one side of the scale, there are several airlines, transfers and time intervals between flights. And on the other, a plane that flights clearly along the specified route. In regular travel, the passenger adjusts to the flight. And in business, the flight adjusts to the passenger. Another, at first glance inconspicuous, but gigantic advantage of business jets is their small size, weight, and as a result, much more modest requirements for airfields. Here, they combine the comfort and capability of large aircraft with the flexibility of small planes. Even very large business jets need the runways much shorter than the runways necessary for most of the classic airliners, not to mention the large wide-body planes. The fact is that there are thousands of airports all over the world to which the large commercial planes simply cannot fly, and where either the business or general aviation or the small regional companies operate. So choosing the destination, you may find that airlines simply will not take you there. This is not just comfort, but also logistics. Which is easier, to immediately fly to the destination with a business jet or, again, fly the transfers by several planes of several airlines? Moreover, curiously, the ability to work at regional airfields is very useful not only to the airplanes, but also for the airfields themselves and their regions. Active flights increase traffic. The business aviation passengers are obviously rich clients, and the development of transportation allows to distribute the business across the country, rather than concentrating it in economic centers. This is one of the important factors that force the governments to support these industries at home. Someone would say that American corporations are simply lobbying for taxes reduction on the aircraft purchases. Nearly 60% of the world business jet market is in the United States. But it is worth saying that such mechanisms are actively used not only by the Americans, but also by their colleagues from Europe and Asia. Another advantage of business jets is their altitude. Classic commercial airliners fly on the altitudes of on average 10 to 12 kilometers, or about 40,000 feet. But the business jets aim higher. Medium-sized planes are easily gaining the ceilings of commercial airliners, and their bigger brothers, such as the Falcon 7X, Bombardier Global Express or Gulfstream 6, are capable of flying at 15.5 kilometers, or over 50,000 feet, above their commercial counterparts. It duplicates the almost forgotten bonus of flights of supersonic airliners that could freely soar 18 to 20 kilometers high. Big business jets of course do not rise to 18 kilometers, but the heights they fly on allow to choose more optimal routes over the main traffic. Business aviation is not just a luxury item, but also an instrument for the implementation of tasks. It can be not only travel, but also business trips, diplomatic meetings, business management and other operations that require fast and flexible transportation in the shortest possible time. Of course, unlike the small general aviation, which should become wide and popular, business aviation has no claim for such titles. 
Even taking into account the huge number of different solutions that make business jets more popular, they will still remain very expensive transport, available to say the least not to everyone. However, it is not just fun and games, it is a large industry and an important part of the aviation world. We will be returning to this industry many times in the future, but for now I think we can finish. Like the video and subscribe to the channel. Luxurious flights and soft landings to you.